Okay, welcome family to another chapter of Feel Free TV. I'm with my friend right here, Rod. So Rod, give us a brief synopsis of who you are. Uh, my name is Rod Rexardo, obviously. Um, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, Bushwick, pretty much all my life. Uh, bounced around different places, seen many things, met many people. Um, I just came home from doing 17 years. Uh, I originally had a life sentence. Uh, it was vacated and um, I got resentenced to uh, time served. And here I am with a uh, little brother Jay, um, continuing on the journey that I once embarked on, which is uh, exploring a life in fitness, you know, what everything, you know, pertains to fitness, boxing, working out. Uh, I was certified in National Academy of Sports Medicine. Um, I'm currently uh, in pursuit of another certification. Um, I'm also a boxing instructor, former Golden Glove champion, Metro Glove champ. Um, trained a lot of fighters, trained with fighters. Um, boxing is definitely my passion. And um, yeah, I met Jay in the park uh, through fitness. Um, we had something in common, you no know, passion for it. And um, we met. Create a dialogue and uh, here we are. He invited me on this platform and come to share. And thank you for uh, joining us and you know giving us your story. My pleasure. Um, I want to ask you. What I want to ask you is, um, how did you get into boxing? Wow, that goes since since I was a pup, man. My father was a he was a fighter. Um, well, he inspired to be a fighter. Uh, he got snow smashed a few times. Um, you know, his parents didn't really have the money to get operations and stuff like that. So he used to always suffer from bleed, so he couldn't really pursue a, a career. But he always took passionate about it. And um, I'm the youngest siblings of three. And um, both my brothers, God bless them, they both deceased. But um, my father always kept a pair of boxing gloves in the car, I always kept a pair in the house. And we had cousins and friends and stuff come over. It was always a boxing match. You know, size them up, size them up. Or we'd be in the street, he'd be like, yo, you, come here, you know, we'll put them on. And, and uh, you know, he toughened us up, man. You know what I mean? He taught us, uh, you know, the body. And I was always passionate about it. Always, you know, I did it as a kid. Um, had a few little amateur fights here and there. Um, nothing major. But then, uh, you know, the streets pulled me in. And, and I lost the love of it. And, so, where are you from originally? From, well, my family's from Puerto Rico. My mom, fall, pops, born and raised. Uh, they came away when we were like teens, early teens and stuff. And, uh, but me, I'm right here in Brooklyn. No, we in St. Mary's Hospital in 1968. Okay. So how was it like growing up in Brooklyn in your youth? Oh man, I don't know if you got enough film. <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, so growing you up, grew up like, so it was like the 70s and 80s. But like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I mean, my wander years was definitely in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, when I started, you know, trying to discover myself was definitely in the 80s. I'm definitely a product of uh, Reaganomics. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my court, my first bid, I was 1984. Uh, I went down for manslaughter. I was 15 years old. Wow. Uh, yeah, nothing proud about. But, um, you know, that, that was a normalcy back then. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, this is what, what I heard taught us. But, yeah, I was in the streets early. And I used to be graffiti writers. So I, I was all over the trains, you know, on the ground and all over the place. Like, yeah, I was, and I was an you know, artist, what they call now artists. You know what I'm saying? I was just a vandal. You know, destroying property and stuff like that. But it, but it was uh, it was more about us, the youth, finding ourselves and and the culture. You know, what was cool at the time, and you know, it was good to see. You look up on the train, you see your name rolling by, even though it was it was a toy or not. You know what I mean? But it was your name, so you know, it showed that you know you had guts and, and you, know, you know, it was a little dead devil. So yeah, that and that just grows and grows and grows and you know, to the final product. So. I want to know. I want to know, like, what what got you into the life of crime? Like, cause for me, like, from my aspect, it was my father actually. You know, actually seeing him being a drug dealer and him having me with him all the time, I kind of picked up yeah. on. Even though he kind of thought that I was too young to, uh, to, to notice, yeah, but, same thing. yeah it's yeah. like kids notice these things. Mm -hmm. I was always in the streets with him, so I just had a love of being in the streets. So what kind of like pulled you in? Okay. First of all, I was, like I said, I was born and raised in Bushwick. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So you couldn't go to the corner store without seeing it. You know what I mean? And all the cool cats that we thought were cool. As I grew older, I realized they were really bozos. But, yeah. you know, at that moment, we thought they were cool. You know, there was the hit crowd and boom. And you would walk by and, you know, because I also came from a big family. My family was respected. You know, they treat, treated you with a separate respect. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, yeah, who's that little blue eyed kid? Oh, yeah, that's so-and-so family. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So when they give you the special attention, like, oh, yo. You know? And, and it, it just builds character even as a youngin. You know, because even when you're hanging out with seven, eight, nine-year-olds, there's still a hierarchy there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you go out and play. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, 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 and when you're outside the street and you got the cool guys in the corner telling you nine, ten years old how cool you are, these little nine, eight-year-olds, they start looking at you as that yeah, character. Right. You know? As that. So so you kind of like geared for that. You know, you kind of like, like even my mother, like my mother witnessed her first husband get murdered. You know, she watched... Uh, not watch my brother, but she experienced my brother get murdered. She watched my other brother die, you know what I'm saying, uh, um, through sickness. So, and her few her brothers and families and, and so on and so on and so on. So she's like super, super duper thick skin, you know? So even her, it was like all tough love, you know? It was, it was like you scrape your knee outside, all right? Don't come in here bleeding. Wait right there. Stay outside that door, mm-hmm. you know? It was like that tough, tough love, but, you know, it was caring and, and but it built character. So, so when you say, you know, I brought you to life of crime, it, 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 it was the culture, you know what I'm saying? It, it was the norm. It, it was what was happening. You know, like if I take you and I throw you in the middle of, of, of a jungle, you know what I'm saying, with animals, you're either going to survive or you're not. You know what I mean? And, and how you survive, you're going to survive according to the laws of the jungle. You're going to know that you don't mess with the, the wasp hive and don't, you know, and the cracks over there and, you know, so pretty much... It, it just sucks you in. Typical, typical federal story anyway, you know, the feds come in. Um, they don't really do no investigations when they hear about an ongoing organization or gang or, or whatever. You know, they want to label you. In our case, we were just a group of guys that just grew up together. You know what I mean? We know each other since we were youngsters, went to school together. You know, hung out and you know, you break bread. So it becomes a pattern of criminality, yeah. right? The way they see it, it becomes a pattern, but it's not. It's, it's like, okay, if I go do a robbery with you today and I go do a robbery with him tomorrow, how are we an organization? You know what I'm saying? Okay, the only common denominator is me. That I know you and you know him, but because I'm the focal point, this is my organization. You know what I mean? I mean, that's the way they interpret it, but we're not going to get too, too much into detail about, about the law because, you know, we know how we, we'll chase our own tails all around and around and around. But, um, but you did 17 years. That's a long time. No, no, no. It, it is. It is. Long. I mean, when you got nothing to look forward to, it seems like nothing. Because it's, it's almost like a switch. You know, this is your new normal. This is what you have to come, you know, contend with. Um, how you're going to do it is the most important part. Because you was looking beyond 17 years. Yeah, yeah it was a you had a life. Yeah. You had a life sentence. Mm-hmm. So, like, how did, how did you keep your sanity... Doing that, that's... I mean, I mean, it's human nature, man. I mean, you know, human nature is to survive. All, all living things, nature is to survive. You know what I mean? And, and, and because of your upbringing, because of your experience, you know, everything that, that, that you passed and that you've seen or that was shared, um, and you take it and, and, and this is when you apply it. You know what I mean? Like this, okay, what do I do now? Okay, I'm here. The reality is I'm here. What can I do about it? The only thing I can do about it is... Through time, you know, I mean, try to figure it out, get in the law library, but it's not much, yeah. you know what I mean, to, to figure out. It's, it's, I'm here, you know, once you accept that, it's easy, you know, because you're not, you're, not, you're not stressing over, you know, your family and women and kids and, you know, all the stuff that you have no control over. Exactly. You know, once you let that go and you realize I have no control over it, I mean, you want to stay tied to it. You want to keep an emotional place for it, but it, it, that emotional place has no purpose where you're at. You know what I mean? So you like, have to detach. While, while your head is looking down and being sad, you're going to be bumped into a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, then you're going to be dealing with that issue and the issue that you have. So it's just too much. You know, you have to accept and say, all right, now nah, I'm just going to have to, you know, live this life. How do I want to live it? You know, do I want to be a, a prey? Do I want to be a predator? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what is it? Like, where, where in that fine line yeah, where do I fit? Yeah. You know? Especially when you're not gang affiliated. The feds is, is, is gang, gang affiliations, gang. man. It is where you're from. 
who you are, your race. You know, even when you say you are run neutral, it's still a gang. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the only thing is just less politics. Neutral with Yeah, that's the best gang to be in, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I don't have to line myself with you. If I don't want to be with you, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just declaring on my on my, my own. And, and for the most part, that's what I did. You know, what I did was, y'all don't want to follow my ideology, then that's not y'all. Go ahead. I'll do, my, I'll do me. And I've done me. And, and like I said, it, sometimes it caused me problems, but whatever. It takes a strong mindset to, do to be neutral. Yeah. And, to be all the way neutral. To all the way neutral. Yeah, yeah. Because it's neutral, then it's all the way neutral. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but being all the way neutral, you also have to be, you also have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. You know, and you have these moral compasses yeah. and stuff, and, 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 and you know what's right and what's wrong. And if you see it's, it's, right, it's wrong, you, you're going to step up. Yeah. You know, even though it's none of your business, mm -hmm. but you're going to step up because it's wrong. You know, that, that's what neutral yeah. is more means to me than anything. It's about right or wrong. And, and if you're a man, you can accept it, you know, whether you're a gang affiliated or not. You know? Definitely. So, um, like after being incarcerated for 17 years, like, what did you learn? I mean, you know, we really much didn't go into the story, but I kind of knew everything going in. And, and I know people say, oh, it's never too late to learn. And you're right, because I did learn something. Mm -hmm. But... What I'm talking about is, is, is the blueprint of life. You know what I mean? What it is to be successful, what it is to, to raise a family. Like, I, I didn't come to, came out of jail and said, okay, boom, I'm gonna start a new life. You know, I mean, I was in the streets hard. And, and, and I, I quit, I just stopped. I just said, you know, I ain't doing this no more. Just like that, I just walked away. I mean, that, that's, you know, we can get into that a little later, but, um, you know, I, I walked away. So I decided to say, okay, this is the way I wanna do it. And, and, and I found the road, I found the blueprint, you know, of success. And while I was way on my way, you know, ready to make the turn on the highway, you know, get on the, and, uh, you know, the feds came, you know what I'm saying, for the stuff that happened seven, eight years prior. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so when you say, what did I learn? I mean, I already knew everything. Before so going. going in, for me, it was about staying true to who I am, regardless of, what the conscious, the image conscious, or what they expect of you is. I can do this being by being myself and being honest with them. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and every day reminding myself that I don't belong here. You know what I'm saying? I belong out here. I'm just surviving. This is just me just trying to survive. So, you know, I mean, it's two different things. So I, I, I really didn't learn nothing, but what I did learn was how to be more empathetic, how to be more objective, yeah. um, to defer, even though you don't have to, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's okay, you know, just, you know, defer a little. And, um, and, and, and the guy, I got through it. That's what helped me survive. And, and, and now I realize using that experience, if I can deal with the most fragile egos <laughs> that the world has to offer, because we yeah. know, you know, the worst of the worst, you know, and me included. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we all had those issues, but we all, some of us grow, some of us don't. So um, when you can deal with those, yeah. out here, man, it is a piece of cake, man. It's a piece of cake. Yeah. So, I've been told that I lack empathy, yeah. and I think maybe that's due to me being incarcerated for maybe a, quite a while, and it's not that's how, that was like maybe that's how I probably survived in prison by not being empathetic to every little thing. It has to be something really serious yeah. for me to really. You know, it's funny because I, I kind of had this conversation. Yeah with someone with a dear friend of mine as well. And, and, I was, and now that you pointed it, now maybe I could articulate it a little better because that's the way you pointed it. It's not that you lack empathy, I think. I think is that if you're gonna share it with somebody, it's energy. Yeah. And it's energy, it's hard energy. So if you're gonna use it, you wanna use it when it's worth it. So a lot of times people are, oh, you're not empathetic. No, I'm just not empathetic to your plight because it's not worth my energy. You know, it's not worth me saying, oh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm if I have to do that forcefully, then I'm, I'm wasting that energy. So then when I really need it, that's when I'm not going to be empathetic because I'm going to be used to, yeah. you know, being fake about it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when do you find yourself? I, I feel the same way about you. It, and, and that part of it, it was a defense mechanism. Yeah. Because some dudes come up to you with the sorriest story. Oh, yo, I didn't get no comments, sir. Yo, can I get a cup of coffee? No. And people be like, oh, why did you deny no coffee? Because he came three times this fucking week. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that yeah. so he runs, you run out of that right. that sorry old that old yeah. you know it's those kind of you know and that's what make hardens you in there. Yeah. So when you come out here, you 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 skeptical about everybody's um, um pity. Yeah, so to speak. You know what I mean? Is it real? Or is it fake? Let me figure it out, and let me figure it out. Is it worth my my and even if it's real, it's like yeah, is it really it, worth it, me? It, it might be real to you, but it's not worth it to me yeah. to, to expend that energy. I get you. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So, like, did you have like a lot of family support? Because they say family support oh. is 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 oh, it's a is a key for people coming home and being being rehabilitated. Having a strong family okay, support. Um, so did you have family um, support um, um, in there? I pushed away. Because of the pity factor, um, um, I've never been one for people to feel pity for me. Like I, it just, I don't feel. It just, I'm just not comfortable, and I know it comes from a, from an honest place and stuff like that. So, like, you know, I had I had, I had this conversation again. But I always have it. It's, it's crazy because you you know you repeat a lot of these conversations over because they lessons, and um and I kind of touched base. I was speaking to one of my cousins, um, and all my family in Connecticut when we were young growing up. Um, before I went off and did my juvenile there, we was always a tight community. Like I told you, my mother raised, you know what I'm saying? So we always, my, my aunts and uncles were always in and out of my house. And and as they, you know, searched for a better life and left New York, they left early in the 80s and late, I mean, late 80s, early 90s. And I'm the only one that stood. So I kind of separated myself from the pack. And, and, and you know, I kind of shot away from them. So now going in, it, it's like an ego thing also, like, now they all want to help because they love me, yeah. but I feel bad because I feel guilty because I never gave them that love, you know, doing it all that separation. I was just so focused and in, in, in the bullshit that I lost that love, you know what I mean, for that family. So me being in prison and, and looking, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. So I wouldn't really want to call because I didn't want to hear, oh, how you doing? You need money? You want? I didn't really want to hear those things because I feel like, you know, they're feeling sorry for me, mm -hmm. you know. And, and you know, I've always been a grinder. So I kind of pushed, but the most important people I kept in my life, of course, which is my mother, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, and, and, and sometimes I even went dark on her. Like when I say dark, like I would disappear for six months. You know, sometimes I would go to the hole for three months, four months, seven months, and just disappear. Like, oh, where you been? You don't like, you know? And, and those are my reasons, but she, you know, I had her, my cousin, and then my daughter, and her daughter, and her mother were the most important ones. And, 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 and every, I say four months, I would get a visit, and and and, and it relieved yeah. a lot of that tension. It's like it's a recharge. Genuine, it's a recharge. Yeah. And, and it gives you that genuine love when you're out there. You know, during the day, you know, you watch your boys and all that. Yo, what's up? It's my dude, my dude. That's not your dude, bro. No. At the end of the day, he might go to back for you. He might catch a knife for you. You know what I'm saying? But that's the life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he's not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's not really. At the end of the day, if he has to. Put a knife in you. He's gonna put a knife in you. You know what I mean. So it's not the same love. So when you get it, it, it you hit it right on the nose. It's a recharge. You know, it's like boom, and then you can go and you're focused on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you re you reevaluate everything you've been doing for the last six, seven months, and that helps you move forward. And you start planning things again. You know, it doesn't become a, a repetitive. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I just say a, a regular you have any habits that was hard to break when you came home. No, that you um. Heard? He was incarcerated. <laughs> uh, you you got what? Audience is making comments. Maybe we got what? Nah, I don't know. My, my. Do you, you think it was one guy? The water, bring the water on. Oh, the water. Yeah. Bring the water on a few times. Bring the water. Oh, walking out my toothbrush. Oh. The toilet paper. I do that. I still do that. Yeah. But um, general habits. No, 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 no. Mine was like wearing my, my uh, slippers in the shower. Like in the shower. Yeah, wow. Stepping in the shower wow. with my slippers and my boxes. And like, I don't have to yeah. like, wear my yeah. boxes yeah. in the shower. Yeah. You know. yeah. So wow. I'll be honest with you, man. As soon as they let me out the door, I just flipped the switch, man. I, I just started thinking yeah. like, I, like I belong. You know? Like I never left. Before I came home, my mother came to my graduation. I uh, graduated college. And I seen how old she got. Wow, yeah. Because I, I hadn't seen my mother for 10 years. Yeah. And then that was the first time I seen her at my college graduation in prison. And I seen her and it, was just, it just broke my heart to see how old she got. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just like, wow. No, that's how, that's how it's, it's, you know. It was like, yo, I have to get out of here. I have to really get 
out of here. Like, really focus. Because a lot of times we think, okay, yeah, I got to get out of prison. Yeah, before you want, you want to see your mother, man. You want yeah, but then when I see my mother, I was just like, oh, I can't believe it's like, she might not even make it. Like, I have to get out of here, you know, to see her. Yeah. So that was like one of my main things, her and then my daughter. Yeah, you know? that, was, that was one of the biggest, you know, um, burdens to carry. Yeah. You know, I, I had it since she was six. I watched this from, from, from day one. And, um, you know, you look at it, you're like, okay, I'm going to create the perfect woman. Yeah. This is going to be the, the, my greatest creation I've ever in my life. And then boom. Yeah. You know? Fortunately, fortunately, she lives with me now. Yeah. So, you know, we we're trying to build up. Well, you know, it's really kind of, it's never too late, but it's you not. You can't make up. I can't make time, up. You know, you can start uh, growing up, you know what I'm saying? She turned into a woman on her own, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of her. You know what I mean? So now it's just moving forward and let's we'll see if we can create the next level. So, in conclusion, they, you did 17 years, you came home. Um, what was, what was the, the hardest part of, of trying to, that to society now, 17 years later, right? What did you have to relearn or slow down? Slow down? And then with all this coronavirus. Oh yeah, you came home. I came, I came home, it was like a yeah. month, yeah. a month of woo -hoo, you know, party. I mean, you know, not responsibly, of course. Yeah. But, um, you know, everybody that knows me knows I'm a socialite. I'm a party animal. You know, I like to socialize, socialize with people. And um, yeah, it was one great, and then great month and then yeah, and then I started, you know, trying to get my life and you know back in order, you know, revisiting all these gems and trying to get back into the fold, and then bang, yeah, I want to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>